Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. I think I need some protein. My blood sugar is low. Low. <laughs> so, low. so, low. so, yeah. Yeah. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring, podcast number 37. Wow, I've been doing this for 37 weeks. Thank you to anybody who's listening. And if nobody is listening, I want to know for myself that it's valid that I'm expressing myself and creating this and that I'm alive and I'm valid and I'm expressing myself. And I know that I listen to my show, so I'm happy about that. So my website is shannonkringen.com and I have info about the podcast. I have photos, music, videos, experimental artwork, several different blogs, a Flickr feed with Creative Commons photos that I create and just multimedia, different kinds of art. Right now, I'll be honest with you and say, let's see, it's June 29th, 2017. And I am extremely exhausted because I have been uh, crippled with anxiety and some depressive tendencies lately. And I just upped my dose of Wellbutrin with my uh, medication person's um, approval. And I'm generally not a medication uh, person. I mostly, I take uh, an herb called ashwagandha and I exercise and eat healthy and try to do things that are good for me. But I was so stressed out and depressed that I thought I would try Wellbutrin again. I tried that years ago and it helped me. But I generally am not a huge fan of, of pharmaceutical medications, but it does help some people. And it just depends on the person and the situation. So I am going through an exceptionally difficult time right now. Things are shifting with the person that I'm dating, but I don't want to say a lot of personal stuff about that. I respect his boundaries and trying to have a little more self-respect for my own boundaries, although I am known for kind of spilling my guts in public, but I want to make sure that I do it in a healthy, respectful way. And what was I going to say? I need to... Words in my head that are swirling... I think I need some protein. My blood sugar is low. I think I need some protein. My blood sugar is low. Low. <laughs> so, low. so, low. so, yeah, yeah. I just realized something. Um, for the last two and a half years, I have been dating this man who is definitely a creative person. He does photography and music. He plays guitar and he sings. He's in a, he has his own band and he has a photo business and he also has done his own fine art photos just for himself and I know I realize now that there's something interesting about the opposites aspect of ourselves I on the outside I appear see he appears to be more conservative than me he's a little bit more conventional the way he dresses uh, the way he was raised the kind of family he comes from is a little more mainstream and traditional than my family. And I appear to be more of a free form, freestyle, wild hippie. But what's funny is that I'm the one who doesn't smoke pot and doesn't like to drink alcohol. And he's the one who's who, you know, smokes a little pot, has a little wine, you know, to relax and unwind. And he just kind of relaxes with that. And he has a kind of, um, even though he's more conventional than me on the outside, I realize that he's more flexible and dynamic and kind of goes with the flow and doesn't feel the need to label relationships and make them be a certain way. And what's funny about me is that on one hand, I'm like this improvisational uh, figure model for artists and I do like stream of consciousness poetry and improvisational like Taoist photography. So basically a lot of my artwork is very spontaneous and creative in a free flow, non-traditional, uh, intuitive, self-taught art kind of way. Although I did take a lot of design classes and my mom is a designer, a good designer, and she raised me around a lot of really good design books. And so I learned from a young age what good design is. And so I guess I, I have been trained in the visual arts uh, but the way I actually do my work is is non-traditional, is more intuitive, and I just do my own thing. 
uh, but I am inspired and influenced by other people like Hunter Wasser and Francis Bacon and Gustav Klimt and all of the different contemporary artists and even when I model for people and I see their paintings and drawings of me and I look at different colors and textures and shapes I'm influenced but what I was going to say I got off on a tangent that's all the freestyle uh, uh, ness of me there's this other aspect of me that is kind of uptight and I don't know if that's just because uh, the way that I was raised was a little bit chaotic and we moved around a lot and my parents um, got divorced when I was four. And so there was a lot of kind of upheaval and changes happening that were sudden around me. And it was kind of stressful. And part of me wanted a sense of stability and a sense of normalcy. So maybe there's part of me that just wants the structure. So what I've noticed about the guy that I'm dating and I is that he on one hand is conventional and very stable and structured. And then on the other hand, he's kind of more let's just take life as it comes, let's go with the flow, let's just see where this goes, let's not try to figure it all out and plan everything. And then there's part of me that's the opposite, that's all uptight and wants to label things and figure things out and define things and be all mathematical about it, A, B, C, and all that kind of stuff and be linear. And I guess that's part of me that wants, um, that craves a sense of safety and stability. And then the other part of me is more freestyle. Like, you know, he, he does music. He actually, he does uh, some blues improv jamming. Although I guess blues is a, is a little bit less improvisational than I thought from what he's described to me. There's certain blues standards that him and his friends play at some open mic sessions around town. And like, you know, you do it in the key of G but then within that, you, you uh, have some freedom to improvise, but then you're always in the key of G. And so there's certain rules that you follow. But I was going to say most of the music that he plays is uh, covers of other artists' songs. And he does it in a very similar way to the original artist. Uh, but he puts his heart and soul into it. So it doesn't just sound like um, hollow and, and boring, like paint by numbers music. It sounds better than that. But he kind of stays true to the original character of the song. Whereas everything I do is more improvisational and non-traditional and I'm not trying to be like other artists or musicians when I do my work. So I'm just noticing the opposites of conventional versus, you know, freestyle. Let's just surf the waves and be improvisational. So yeah, I'm just noticing that and I am so tired right now. I'm, I'm sitting here with my eyes closed as I record my voice just um, thinking about the paradoxes in life. And there it is. Thanks for listening. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring on Hollow Earth Radio, Seattle. I think I need some protein. My blood sugar is low. Low. <laughs> low. So, low. so, low. so, yeah. Yeah. I think I need some protein. My blood sugar is low. <laughs> low. Low. So, low. so, low. so, yeah, yeah. Get us a good get seat, us a Jack. Good get us a Jack. good get us a Jack. Jack. Get Thank you. Jack. Thank you. Mmm, the sun feels good on my bandages today. Today. And I wonder about the wonder about the wonder about the wonder about the I'm not supposed to get my bandages wet. Everybody doesn't like something, but nobody doesn't like Cheryl Lee. Cheryl Lee Cheesecake, available frozen, wrapped in plastic, in the diary cooler. Oh, I mean dairy cooler. So good, it's almost sinful.
sample your voice. It's your choice to sample the voice. Alone, all one. Oxymorons through the door. A group for loners. And they all showed up. I own me. So this keyboard of mine, you sample your voice and then it does this over and over and over, up and down on the keys. I guess that's C. I own me. I own me is D, I guess. I own me. I own me. So it's fun to play with the voice. You are. 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 You are, you are, you are, you are, you are. 
is Shannon Kringen Podcast, Goddess Kring number 37, sound effects playing around. Hollow Earth Radio Seattle.
all that jazz. that I used to play when I was 11 or 12, but I forgot how to play it, but I don't know who wrote that, but I did not write that. I'll play you the song that I wrote now. at one point so I'm going to do that again. I started writing this song when I was 11 and I never finished it due to personal issues in my life. Let's see. <laughs> song for an 11 year old and I never titled it I just call it song I wrote when I was 11 and I wish I could finish it I have a lot of anxiety and um, problems going on psychologically <laughs> and I'm like always rushing around busy working all the time I guess I'll do a little bit of a monologue now about this um, okay it is now June 29th 2017 and I'm sitting in my apartment in Seattle with my kitty Kisun, orange fluffy cat and I'm feeling really nervous and I'm feeling like I'm really glad that I have the courage to do this podcast and to record my voice and I'm thinking about you know I've been on this planet for 48 years but I feel really nervous and I feel I kind of wonder if the Wellbutrin is making me worse and more anxious. You know, maybe I should taper off of it. I don't really know what I should do, but even before I started taking this Wellbutrin, though, I think I, I felt, I generally feel like my brain is so chaotic, and I know that meditation might help me, and I, I go for a walk almost every day. I just feel like I have all this nervous energy and I feel um, like it's hard to relax and slow down my voice. I guess my voice is in my head. Voices inside my head. What is that? The police song. Voices inside my head. Echo things that you said. Yeah. Does he sting say that? He goes, voices inside my head. Echo things that you said. So yeah, not that I'm going to imitate Sting, but <laughs> I do love the police, though. That's a good band. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, as we all know, Tom Petty widens my jetty. Tom Petty is my favorite um, rock and roll songwriter. Tori Amos is my second favorite. I guess Tom and Tori actually tie. The male, the, f the f uh, <laughs> my favorite male and female songwriters would be Tom Petty and Tori Amos. But I will say that I'm playing with my keyboards now and I feel a little bit sad that I never finished that song when I was 11. I kind of feel like since I have this keyboard that a fan got me, I feel like as a gift, thank you so much, I feel like um, maybe if I slowed down in my life enough, because actually I work more than I need to. You know, I kind of compulsively work sometimes seven days a week. You know, I'm on call as an art model and then I also sometimes deliver groceries, which is a very stressful job. And I'm looking into a dog walking job, <laughs> as silly as that sounds. But I really, really love animals. And I would love to 
uh, do some kind of work involving helping taking care of animals. I just really love it. I don't want to be a vet though, because I'd have to go to vet school and I don't think that I'm medical enough to really pursue that. Uh, but I do love animals. And by the way, my cat Kisun is still doing very, very well on his raw meat diet. I get uh, my cat special food from the health food pet store and it's mostly raw meat and no no uh, sugar or carbs or fillers it's just like formulated for cats and they have some for dogs that's like um, nutritionally balanced for all life stages it has like mostly meat uh, regular meat and organ meats and then it has I think like eggs and uh, fish oil and various vitamins and minerals that they somehow um, f and then they put facillin husks or something to help add fiber so it's basically a lot healthier than commercial pet food even the kind of pet food that some of the vets recommend actually has some toxic stuff in it and some preservatives and just too much too many carbs and sugars and just too many grains actually and even grain free cat and dog food has like potatoes in it and rice and and I don't know about dogs but cats do not need potatoes or rice or blueberries you know they don't need fruits or grains uh, and I'm not sure about vegetables but generally cats need mostly just meat and um, good high protein uh, meat with some fat and not too much sodium and so basically I uh, I get some like frozen chicken hearts and I slice them up for my cat and that's kind of a snack but I don't give him more than two a day because I was told they're a little bit high in sodium for cats uh, chicken hearts uh, but they have taurine in them which is very very good for his eyesight apparently and there's good minerals good vitamins and minerals in the chicken hearts that I get at the health food pet food store they sell them by the pound they're not very expensive and they come in like a big uh, plastic uh, pouch that's frozen and I put it into smaller pouches and it lasts quite a while and I think it's only like 250 a pound or I don't remember what it is but a big a big uh, container of chicken hearts are not very much so um, that's an inexpensive sort of hors d'oeuvre that I feed my cat and then every once in a while I'll get him like human grade meat like chicken or beef and then I will freeze it. I'll get it at the regular, you know, human store. And then I will put it in my freezer in small Ziploc bags and let it freeze for at least three days. Because if there's any um, uh, bad bacteria in the meat, it tends to die after three days. And then I can feed him the raw meat. I slice it up into small slices. And again, that's just sort of an hors d'oeuvre for him because it's not really nutritionally balanced to just give them raw meat and nothing else. So what I really trust for him uh, to get the nutritional balance that he needs is, and I don't give him any dry food either. I only give him raw frozen uh, meat food and it's um, formulated for cats, all life stages, nutritionally balanced, etc. And there's a certain brand that I like and there's about three different brands that they have at the health food pets food store here in Seattle. And my cat is much happier and, um, his digestion was kind of messed up before he had sort of diarrhea and he had kind of um, he was drinking a lot of water and peeing a lot and I was worried about his kidneys because that's a sign of dehydration if they do that and as soon as I switched him to a raw meat diet he uh, stopped drinking tons of water because he gets most of his liquid now from his meat food so if you have a dog or a cat, there's a lady online, actually, Dr. Karen Becker. She has YouTube videos. So if you just Google Karen Becker, Dr. Karen Becker, she's a kind of a naturopathic veterinarian. She's a regular vet, but she also has a lot of knowledge in natural medicine for pets, dogs and cats. So she's a real animal lover, and she has really good advice on how to safely feed your dog and cat raw meat diet. Um, some of the foods that vets recommend um, are not necessarily healthy for cats and dogs because there's too much sugar and carbs and fillers and preservatives. And when meat is cooked, it kind of loses a lot of the nutritional value because there isn't all the raw enzymes. And it's also harder for them to digest. So if you feed them raw frozen uh, meat formulated for cats and dogs, 
And you can also make your own actually, but I don't have a food processor and I have a really small kitchen, so I tend to not make my own cat food, but I thought about it. There's recipes online where you can, you know, mix um, organ meat with regular meat and then mix it with different nutrients and different, I think you have to add fish oil, um, you have to add different things to the meat and then grind it up in a food processor and then you can freeze it in little bags. And then that can be um, homemade cat or dog food. But Dr. Karen Becker online has a lot of good advice on how to do it. Because if you just feed your cat or dog, you know, food scraps that you eat of meat, that's not, that's not going to work, especially if it's cooked because it doesn't have as much nutritional value when it's cooked. They need the raw enzymes. And out in the wild, when they hunt animals, they eat them raw. So it's really pretty normal actually for cats and dogs to eat raw meat. Even though we humans don't eat raw meat because it's dangerous for us, our stomachs and digestive systems are very, very sensitive and would get sick if we ate a lot of raw meat probably. But cats and dogs can handle a lot of the bacteria that we can't handle. And plus, if you freeze raw meat for at least three days, it tends to kill uh, some of the dangerous bacteria. But actually, cats and dogs, if they're exposed to some of the bacteria that would make humans ill, it does not make the cats and dogs ill. So, uh, and I've been feeding my cat this raw food diet since um, for I guess for six months now, almost seven months since December or January. So that's six or seven months and he's doing really, really well. His digestive system is great. He pees a normal amount. He doesn't seem dehydrated. His fur looks nice and shiny. I also feed him coconut oil. I use uh, coconut oil for my uh, lotion, for my moisturizer on my skin and I, he licks it off my finger, and then I looked it up online, and apparently coconut oil is safe for dogs and cats, so I let him lick it off my finger, and he really enjoys it, and I think it's really good for his fur, and I brush him, and he used to have dandruff. He doesn't seem to have any dandruff anymore, so I think the raw meat diet and the coconut oil really agrees with him. I also feed him a little bit of uh, nutritional yeast, which is brewer's yeast. They call it hippie dust. I eat that. It's full of B vitamins and good things, and I eat that on my salads, and my cat sometimes licks that off my finger as well, and apparently that's good for, for cats too. I don't know about dogs for brewer's yeast, but for cats, it's okay. So nutrition actually is one of my interests. So I just thought I would share that raw meat diet that I feed my cat is going really well. Thank you for listening. This is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen on Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. Podcast number 37 already.
So I took piano lessons age 9, 10, and 11 off and on. Uh, I grew up, was born in San Diego and uh, lived there till I was about 9. And then my mom and I moved up to Washington State, Whidbey Island. And so I stopped piano lessons because we left San Diego. And then I restarted uh, them again. I think I had a couple different piano teachers on Whidbey Island the south end and the north end and so I just kind of started and stopped and I'm a little bit sad that I didn't continue with music as a kid but I need to just stay in the present moment I'm 48 now and I like to goof around on the keyboard and I like the different sound effects I can make on this keyboard and it has a voice sample thingy Mick Jagger and I love to play with it and I might just keep goofing around the way I am because I find it kind of therapeutic but I might actually retake you know maybe well actually online now there's probably free tutorials I can take online like sort of piano lessons online because I kind of am a little bit rusty and I kind of forgot like I used to practice my scales every day and uh, have certain ways of keeping my fingers coordinated and in rhythm and I suppose I could just practice every day and perhaps finish writing that song that I wrote when I was 11 or you know come up with the left hand or maybe cheat and find a if there's an audio accompany I can't say the word accompaniment how do you say that word it's like the word per permanent per permanent <laughs> I there's certain words I just can't say I don't know like I'm audio dyslexic or something which is funny because I actually like the way things sound backwards you know like when you record your voice and then you play it backwards I kind of like the strange sound that you get. It sounds a little bit like Norwegian to me. I was in Norway, and when I heard the people speak Norwegian, I thought, wow, that sounds a little bit like when my voice is backwards. I mean, I'm not I'm not uh, making fun of Norwegian language. I'm just saying that I'm fascinated by kind of like I like to look at visually abstract uh, paintings and drawings that are non-representational, that are just shapes and they may or may not look like something from the regular natural world. Uh, and I, I, it's similar to with audio. I like it when I hear a sound that is unusual and abstract, like a voice played backwards, sounds like a different language. And you actually get, maybe I'll, I'll play a sample for you, but you get, you know, you get like, you know, you get like sounds. Um, or I don't know I can't imitate it but you know like different sound like when people speak French and they do the different things that um, we as English speaking Americans don't make certain sounds when we speak like German people or French people or you know whatever all the and even Russian like different languages I'm fascinated by the different sounds that I hear in the different textures of different languages so when I play my voice backwards, it's pretty interesting, I think.
So that was the church organ sound that I was just playing and that was just total like improvisation. And I know that I'm not a spectacular keyboard player, but I really like to make patterns and play around with sound. I, I noticed that uh, most of my life I've done mostly visual art and I feel like I'm kind of um, a little tired of visuals. Like, like I love visuals, but I, I mean like literally my eyes are tired. Like, like I love to look at art and make art visually still, but my eyes are physically tired. I'm actually, I have astigmatism and I'm supposed to be wearing glasses, but I don't want to. And my eyes are too sensitive for contacts. I tried that and I have uh, vision issues basically. I see pretty well, but um, I squint a lot and I, my eyes get tired. So, and I've taken like thousands and thousands of photographs and when I was 11 years old, I kind of is, was as much into music, uh, making music and listening to music. And I used to listen to all of my favorite rock bands, uh, Blondie and The Doors and The Rolling Stones and Tom Petty and uh, Neil Young and David Bowie and all these different like rock people. And then I also loved Joan Baez and Frank Sinatra and Bob Dylan and just lots of different music. And I would memorize the lyrics and really, really listen to the lyrics. I kind of get that from my dad. My dad used to write comedy and music and folk music, and he's written some folk songs and plays guitar, sort of taught himself how to play guitar. So I kind of grew up with a dad that was a bit creative with music and comedy. And so he exposed me to, and maybe I was just born with a sensitivity like him to language and words and music. And then my mom is very visually oriented and she exposed me to all kinds of interesting visual things. So I'm fortunate in that way and grateful for that exposure to um, art and music that my parents gave me and comedy. My dad has a very good sense of humor and um, he even once taught tennis to the actor Paul Servino in the 80s. And... Um, Paul Servino said my dad was very gifted and funny and unique and um, they were almost going to connect in some way in Los Angeles but my dad sort of lost touch with him but that never uh, petered out that kind of petered out but it was really interesting to I got to meet Paul Servino and have when I was 13 years old and have uh, uh, breakfast with um, my dad and Paul Servino and um, his uh, daughter is Mira Servino who won an Oscar and uh, uh, Paul Servino has acted in lots of different films. Um, I think Reds is one of them with Jack Nicholson and Warren Beatty and etc. I don't know. He's worked with all kinds of interesting people. That's just an interesting random fact about my life. And I was once an extra in a movie called American Heart with Jeff Bridges. Let's see. I think I've already said that before. So Twin Peaks. I am in a play. I'm, I'm, I have a very small part. I play the part of Audrey in Twin Peaks live episode three. And it plays at the West of Lennon Theater in Seattle, in uh, the Fremont neighborhood. It is 203 North 36th Street. And the times for this play are July 7th and 8th at 8 p.m., July 9th at 4 p.m., and then July 14th and 15th at 8 p.m., and July 16th at 4 p.m. So that's like two weekends in a row, Friday and Saturday nights, 8 p.m. and Sunday matinee, 4 p.m. And so we're gonna do it like uh, six times. And I almost have my lines memorized. And so I'm happy that I'm a part of this play. Last week on my podcast, I had the playwright and director, Chris Matthews on as my first guest. And I really um, appreciate Chris being on. I have to admit that I wasn't as comfortable uh, having a guest as I am when I'm by myself. And I don't know if um, I need to change into somebody who enjoys having guests more or if it's okay for me to just say, you know what, I just prefer doing this on my own because I'm, I'm just better at doing solo things. Like even when I play tennis, like I'm better at singles tennis than I am at doubles tennis. And so it could be that my forte is doing more solo type uh, music and, and um, visual art, I don't know, by myself. 
that's one reason why I actually like to be a model for other artists, because at least that's a way in which I can sort of collaborate, like I'm the model, and then they're the artist. And so I feel like that's how I can work with another person and feel comfortable is when I'm the model. But when I try to like do music with somebody, I get kind of shy and nervous. Although I did work with Claxton Kent in Portland, Oregon a few years ago, and we made some really cool music together. Um, and he would, you know, was good at getting me to break out of my shell. And we worked in his little tiny recording studio and that was really fun. And I'm grateful for that. So I have collaborated with some other people and I've worked with some amazing photographers. Uh, but I have to say that the most fun I've had usually is when I work by myself, when I take photographs of myself or paint or draw in my purely abstract way. And when I've done my video performance art or when I go up on stage and do my poetry and my spoken word, I feel more confident doing solo stuff than I do working with others. And again, I'm trying to figure out, am I just insecure and I should learn how to work with others better and push, my, push myself past my comfort zone? Or is it okay if I just accept that my my talent is to work solo and that that's a gift of mine? Because some people don't like to work solo and they prefer working with others. So maybe people are best off doing what they love the most and not necessarily just what you're good at. Although if you're lucky, you love doing what you're good at. Uh, but even if you're... <laughs> not very good at something, if you really love doing it, I think that that has value. So if you love playing the keyboard, like I love playing the keyboard, although I'm not like amazingly talented, but I think I have a little bit of musical talent. And I think the most important thing is that we do what we enjoy. So thankfully I can make my full-time living as a model for other artists. And then I'm able to do my artwork for free basically. And that's kind of how I like to do it. Uh, other artists do it a different way. For now, that's what I'm doing as a 48-year-old in Seattle. So this is Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. You're listening to God, Goddess Kring, podcast number 37, uh, June 29th, 2017. Thank you for tuning in.
your voice. Goddess Cream, Goddess Cream, Goddess Cream, Goddess Cream. 